Hi, I'm Tim Duggan, a lawyer with Horlick Levitt Delilah LLP. Welcome to this week's edition of HLD's Case Law Corner. This week I'll be discussing the court's decision in Metropolitan Toronto Condominium Corporation number 933 in Lynn. This case dealt with a noise dispute involving a tenanted unit. Now, under the Condominium Act 1998, unit owners are responsible for taking reasonable steps to ensure that their tenants comply with the Act and with the corporation's governing documents. If the tenant acts in such a way as to breach the Act or the governing documents and the owner fails to take reasonable steps to address the conduct, then the owner may be liable if the corporation is forced to take steps to enforce. As such, when a dispute arises involving the conduct of a tenant, one of the questions that will generally need to be answered is whether the owner has taken sufficient steps to discharge the owner's obligation to try to control the tenant's behavior. Now, in this case, Ms. Kellicharen rented a unit from Ms. Lynn. These are the two respondents in the corporation's application here. Soon after Ms. Kellicharen moved into the unit, the corporation started receiving complaints from the occupant of the neighboring unit about excessive noise emanating from Ms. Kellicharen's unit, often late at night. Over the span of a year and a half, Ms. Kellicharen's neighbor submitted at least 14 separate noise complaints to the corporation. This led to frequent attendances at Ms. Kellicharen's unit by the building concierge to try and get her to calm down, at least one call to the police, and several letters from the corporation's condominium manager and then the corporation's lawyers, but these noise complaints continued. Eventually, the corporation brought this application, as I said, against Ms. Lynn and Ms. Kellicharen. It sought an order against Ms. Kellicharen requiring her to cease making this unreasonable noise in the unit, and an order declaring that Ms. Lynn had failed to take reasonable steps to address or control Ms. Kellicharen's conduct. And Ms. Kalacharan, for her part, denied that she had made the noise uh, complained of. She claimed that there were isolated incidences of noise, but nothing warranting court involvement. Uh, the court, however, based on the evidence, had no difficulty concluding that Ms. Kalacharan had made unreasonable amounts of noise in the unit, that she'd done so frequently, and that she had breached the Condominium Act and the corporation's governing documents by this conduct. The court, however, was not satisfied that Ms. Lynn had failed to take reasonable steps to address her tenant's conduct. One of the significant issues for the court was that Ms. Lynn was not initially put on notice of the issues that uh, her tenant's behavior was causing. And once she had been put on notice, she was, took all reasonable steps to try and rectify the situation thereafter. The court also found that the corporation had been uncooperative with Ms. Lynn's efforts to get information that she needed in order to effectively address, address her tenant's conduct by commencing uh, eviction proceedings before the Landlord and Tenant Board. As a result, while the court did grant the relief that the corporation sought against Ms. Kellicharen and ordered her to uh, behave herself in the unit, the court dismissed the corporation's request to be able to claim any portion of its costs from Ms. Lynn. The court did award costs against Ms. Kellicharen, but the corporation was not able to get any award of costs against Ms. Lynn, which means that it didn't have recourse to add those costs to Ms. Lynn's common expenses and collect them that way. Now, this case reaffirms the importance for condominium corporations to keep unit owners informed about issues with their tenants as soon as is reasonably possible. Inform them immediately, keep them informed throughout, and provide them with the necessary information that they need to effectively address issues with their tenants. A corporation that fails to do so may find itself in the position of the corporation in this case, having a cost award that it may not be able to enforce, especially if the tenant vacates the unit after the order is made. That has been this week's edition of HLD's Case Law Corner. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to join us every Wednesday for HLD's Condo Law Livestream on YouTube.